Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're logging into your favorite game, grinding out some gear. A couple of points added to your stats, and you have a virtual beer. Max level is pretty cool, but I'll remind you here, my friend. These games are not about the goals, it's about the journey and not the end. You're listening to MMO Reporter, brought to you by audible.com get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash mmo reporter and by doghouse systems choose your weapon with doghouse systems don't 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 don't, don't forget about your ults you need to cherish each and every little character you've got no matter what level they're at Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MMO Reporter. This is episode 178. I'm Chris and I am joined by the very warm, the very yard work intensive gentleman, Mr. At MMO Bill. Hi Bill. Hello. I have going to be words in the heat stroke. Heat stroke. I know all about that as we have both experienced heat stroke together, haven't we? Oh my yes, uh, it's uh, <laughs> I, I. It's a beautiful part of the world we live in, and everything like that. But uh, for about six weeks out of the year, maybe eight weeks out of the year, it just gets stupid hot, like unfairly hot. That it does, and of course, the guy who has a plan for dealing with that stupid hot, or at least the stupid part, the pantless wonder himself, Leonor. Hi, Leonor. Hello, minions. I totally recommend if you. Go uh, onto Netflix and watch the old Batman movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger where he says, Everybody freeze. How come Mr. Freeze was all of a sudden from India? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but that, that your Austrian accent was vaguely Indian. And yeah. I'm not good with accents. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um... If I wanted to offend a large portion of our audience, I would continue along those lines, but I'm not going to because I don't want to. You know, one of these days, I think we need to catalog all of the missed accents that we do on this show because I feel like <laughs> we, we aim for a lot of accents and we either, we always miss, but whether we miss hey, always, I don't replicating know. one accent or shifting between three different accents in our impression or just inventing an entirely new accent we're really terrible <laughs> at it and i feel like it should be cataloged hey according to am set i have some pretty darn good elvish sindarin in fact uh, sindarin. as i recall you have like barely recognizable elvish well you remember which, wrong. Is, a, which is a step better than where i am I, i'm not going to uh not going to claim otherwise, yeah. but uh, yeah, th yeah. There's 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 a big step between barely acceptable and excellent. That's that's very <laughs> very true. All right, let's get into things here. People love to hear our banter, but they want to hear us banter about games. So let's get right into it. Lenor, what's been keeping you busy? Uh, I jumped into Lotro just today and uh, got into the the Etmores, the PvP area. And I really haven't been playing that much. Uh, it's been about two weeks since I've actually just sat down and played a lot of it. And I got into the PvP area and noticed that all of the names are different. Uh, there aren't that many people that I recognize, and it's like almost just joining a brand new game again. Oh, wow. That's going to be a little One bit of... tough because it's, it's, PvP is kind of a, a community in, in and of itself in Lotro, right? Right, right. It, it's always been its own little, you know, sub-community. Uh, they did change the game a little bit, though, so this feature might be getting popular. It, it's the, um, if you're a subscriber, you can go into PvP and scale all the way up. Oh, really? So if you're level 10, you can scale all the way up to 95 and get in there and start doing PvP stuff. So that might be getting more popular, and well, that's there seven might be a late. whole lot of uh, uh, newbies getting in there. Yeah, seven years too late is the wrong. I didn't mean to say that. That's that that. Well, okay, that should have been there seven years ago. But hey, you know. 
Uh, I played a whole heck of a lot of Wildstar, and uh, well, we I, I did some stuff with Chris in Wildstar, and, and uh, I'll I'll wait for him to talk about that in his parts. Um, well, I no, jumped no, no, into... no, it's, you know, you can slowly get into, into what you wanted to say here. You, you, what, what are you oh, going to say? What? I, I see. Um, okay. So, uh, um... Yes? Uh, I leveled before you. You, you, you what? Sorry? I leveled before you. So, so you, you hit level 50? Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Good job, Lena. God, Good. that's like the worst celebrating music ever. <laughs> Is it? Oh. I kind of oh. think that's the point. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Um, I knew I was. No, you would into never something. be sarcastic ever, would you, no, Chris? No, no, no. I knew I knew it was I was stepping into something something bad and squishy and smelly but uh do, do you want to ask wow. me anything about that? No, I'll ask you later. No, oh, okay. I got to recover. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but good job. That was a good celebration for you. You hit level 50. Way to go, Lanor. Level cap in Wildstar. Yeah. Before, before me. Um uh, um, 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 friend of mine got me into Final Fantasy XI. Eleven. Eleven. That was eleven. That oh, was wow. the uh, uh, one of the big major MMOs that I joined up and and actually played a lot of. I think that was probably the second MMO that I played, other than Ragnarok Online. And uh, wow, so many memories. Hmm. I'm just like walking around, you know, like there's a beach over here, and then there's some trees over there. But a lot of those <laughs> places we had to camp and just sit there and pull in one mob and it's like a big boss fight because that's how this game is you fight this one mob for like five minutes it's like it's like a big boss fight and you get a little bit of experience and then someone's got to go out and pull another one so all of those little spots in that in those areas are where we had to camp and i'm just bringing back all of these memories even though it is just a tree or it is just a rock with the water next to it you know so it's it's uh, some memory lane stuff going on there. And um, uh, I, I, I don't have a place for, to, to put this into the show, so I thought I'd put it into the show here. I was looking up stuff on MMOs today to put into the show notes, and I had this weird advertisement pop up, and it just played sound. So it can, can you click on that and have the sound play for a second? Are you a boy, boy or a girl? I feel I feel like that's a sound clip that we need now forever. It's, it's and I looked around. Are I'm you looking a at boy or a girl? I'm looking at my website. So I'm like, who the hell said that? Okay, okay wait. Here, here's what there's there's the part that they missed here afterwards. Are, Are you a boy or a girl? I have some candy in my van. <laughs> I was going to say it's it's kind of creepy. Whoa! It was it's creepy. That's... Kind of a dumb question. Um. Well, are you a boy Planar? or a girl? <laughs> Let's click here. Which one? Oh, girl. Girl. Obviously. Okay, and I just kind of want to see how creepy this happens. actually gets. Not a thing. Okay. There you go. It's but I, I can't go back to. Are you a boy or a girl? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's oh, going to so give somebody some nightmares. that's what I've been doing this week. <laughs> wow. All right, Bill, on that auspicious note, you're up. <laughs> well, I have played not a damn thing this week. It's been painful and saddening and everything like that. I went out. I actually went. Uh, I, I disconnected. I went out camping in a place where there was absolutely no internet and uh, it was it was actually kind of nice, but uh, I, I I have missed games. So how, I'm how was the hot tub? To... The hot tub? Was there there no hot tub where you go camping? There was there was no hot tub. There was a lake. I what went about, fishing. What about the pool? That was good. Is I it, played the fishing the MMO. I guess I went. I was in the same boat as two other people. Does that count as grouping against the lake? 
Yeah, no. Um, although, you know, um, Seleni and I have, have decided now for many years that our, our idea of a good campground is one with, uh, with good Wi-Fi and a nice heated pool. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm how we can't get there. back to your roots. I, I, oh, gee, my roots. Happy Canada Day to you, too. <laughs> um, I, yeah, no, I'm not quite there yet. I actually do enjoy a good camp every once in a while, but I will be happy to hop back into uh, some gaming. I'm actually looking forward to the new, the, the new story season for Guild Wars 2 when that pops up. I may have. Uh, convinced Asani to play Wildstar with me, so I'll give that another run. And uh, yeah, but uh, but I did play the uh, spend all my friggin' money on Steam games during the Steam holiday. So <laughs> I, I I I I just did a double check because I didn't think that I actually bought that much, but I went and looked through the purchase history, and and this is actually what I bought. So I bought Witcher Two. I think that was on like the very first day of the Steam sale. So awesome. looking forward to that. I, I bought Magicka, which I talked about last week. I bought mm -hmm. uh, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, which is uh, apparently a, kind of a adventure, a controller-based uh, adventure game. So looking forward to trying that out. I bought The Secret World when it was on sale. So I'll, uh, I, I, I mainly bought that. It's not even so much that I, I'm super excited to play The Secret World, <laughs> even though I, I, I want to have it in the repertoire. It'll just burn just, all my hopes. <laughs> I, I, more than anything, I really just wanted to support the the business model, the buy the game and play it for free kind of model. So, if they actually do that, then I might actually play Secret World a little bit more. So, we'll try that. I bought Dishonored. I bought Shadowrun Returns, which I'm actually pretty excited about. And yeah. uh, I was actually gifted uh, Batman: Arkham Origins by. Uh, my new favorite listener of the week, uh, Froon Juice. So thank you very much, Froon Juice. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, pretty awesome. He sent us uh, sent a whole bunch of us games. Leonor, I think uh, <clears throat> you mentioned it on Lotro Reporter a bit ago, but I don't think you mentioned it here. Uh, he gifted you a game as well, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if he remembered that I didn't play Portal Two, but he got me Portal Two, and I I put it in today and played for a little while, and, and I'm absolutely loving it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Fruit and juice listener of the week. Yes. You're very easily bribed Absolutely. here. So that's <laughs> about my gaming week or lack thereof. Uh, how about you, Chris? Uh, what did you play? We, let's let's uh, let's get into the very long list of games that you played this week. I'm really excited <laughs> to hear everything you tried <laughs> again because it didn't really work out last week. And I think we I thought we built it up quite a bit and left the listeners a little bit disappointed. But this week, I'm sure you've got a huge list for us and, and it's going to be eclectic and unique and it's going to excite everybody. So here you go, Chris. What what, what have you all played this week? I, I played Wildstar. Oh, he just knocked that right Bam. out of the park, didn't he? Yeah. Bam. I, 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 okay, so I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you a little story. I was, I was walking around, questing. I did a lot of PvP, but I was questing, going around the Northern Wilds, and, and finishing quests, and having a grand old time, oh, and, and really doing the best that I could. And then it got me. I hit... Level 50 in Wildstar. That's right. That's right. Level 50 in Wildstar. Woohoo! How do you like that celebration music, Leonor? It's about 23 hours late. Which is like 23 hours, uh, you know, of the challenge that that you started okay where were we you were 44 and i was 30 or something when we yeah, started said, that I'm catching up and i was like what and you got from 44 to 50 and i got from 30 to 50 within 23 hours i think that's pretty awesome that is pretty awesome almost as awesome i have to say how many of you are watching defiance by the way anybody watching defiance Anybody? Anybody? Crickets. No? Oh, Crickets. it's awesome show. Julie Benz, who, if anybody watched Dexter, was also uh, Dexter's wife there. She's on mm -hmm. Defiance. She tweeted Defiance podcast. 
she said, Great Defiance Podcast. Cool. So, yeah. It's it's pretty awesome. And then awesome. linked. I've I've listened to a couple of their shows and they have had some connect uh some contact with some of the people on the show. Uh yeah. Um, I I don't know if it was like the writer or somebody, but there was a there was a couple of people that have contacted them and, and said, Hey, you know, what's up? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. So I just wanted to say that because I'm so proud of them. They're so awesome. Right, but we're going back to topic again, and you know, yep. I, I leveled star. before you. Wild star. I'm level 50 now. I did, yep. and and the the server was about to go down last night. Like I hit, I hit level 50 at like 11:44, and then I had 16 <laughs> minutes to try and get all of my dailies in before the server went down for the patch. Okay, I yep. have a quick question. You were talking yep. about how much fun that you had trying yes. to uh, get to level 50 yes. within my challenge rules. Yes. So how, how did your day play out? I mean, it looked like you were trying to come on as much as possible. Yeah, I didn't get as much time as I wanted to because, you know, I, during the summer I'm Mr. Mr. Dad at home here and uh, right. I, get to, I get to watch the kids all day. But when I could, I, I went through the zone stories and the world stories like everyone who says to to do uh, for the leveling, and I don't think I will ever do that again because the grind at 48, 49 is too much because you finish all the zone and, and story quests, and then you're stuck under-leveled for tasks that are level 49 and 50, which are like side quests, and mm-hmm. and you really can't do them very well. So, you know, when I'm level 48 and I'm having to do level 49, 50 tasks, those are really tough, especially yeah. in that sort of, end area there and if i go back too far then i'm over leveled so Mm -hmm. i think next time when i level another character i will be doing all of the quests as i go through and it might not be the the fastest way to level but i'm not a grinder like i i just that's not me in any game i don't like to just sit there and grind that's why things like marvel heroes and uh diablo i like them and i love the story but i don't go back and i don't play them again and again and again and again because mm-hmm. it's it's too much of a grind. It's too much of the same thing. And that's what ended up happening at the end there. And I, it wasn't the game's fault. It was the way I had tried to game the game to try mm-hmm. and level faster. And I do think I leveled faster than I would have otherwise. I just don't think it was worth it. Mm. Does that make sense? And that's, that's yep. a total personal preference thing. That's not a, the game sucks because of this or anything like that. It's totally, I don't want to do that mm-hmm. so i'm not going to again did you enjoy all those rocky songs i sent you every two hours did you i sent you sent me the one i saw the one did you tweet at me all the time i only saw the one. Oh yeah really every two hours I, i'm i'm looking at my did you email them because i'm looking at <laughs> twitter here i don't I see sent, anything you got the touch from transformers oh, oh uh, i see now 9 11 lots of rocky 12. songs yeah okay i need to reset my my uh, my Twitter my my Almazar because it doesn't ping me all the time. I need to go check my yeah, settings. Yeah, I'm not getting I'm not getting uh, Twitch that much either. Either. Yeah, I, I just don't get the, the pings when I get a message. So I want mm-hmm. the ping. I want the ding. Yeah. Anyways, so that's that's all I've been doing. Did are you planning on getting back into Wildstar build? Do you think our experience here, our discussion about it, has has helped things any? Uh. I I'll give it a try. We'll see. I think I think I actually accidentally re-upped my subscription anyway. So accidentally, but I, I didn't right. cancel it. Is what oh. I didn't do. So <laughs> so I think I I think I'm on board to to give it another go anyway. So we'll we'll see what happens. I I'm yeah. only like level seventeen or eighteen or something like that right now. So it's not. Uh, I'm I'm not going to be like racing up to fifty right behind yeah. you or anything like that. So yeah. So but, with with a large portion and just the way the game has uh, was was uh, marketed and the way the game was set up, I think it it lent itself to this. The majority of the population, I do believe, in this game or a large a higher percentage than other games, I do think is at level cap because it was built and and sold as a hardcore game i think that type of of quick leveling player has has really gotten to the cap more higher a higher percentage at least than in other games do you think Mm -hmm. that the latest um uh, the ultra drop that they just released which is level 50 content only uh is um is going to be 
hurtful to the game because it doesn't involve content for the lower levels or whatever. Bill? Uh, I would say whatever. I mean, it's hard for me to really say definitively one way or the other because I, I can't really tell if the game is missing mid-level content because I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I mean, practically, I don't know... I don't think so. I, I think that when you're when you're working on an MMO, the, the most of your content should probably be developed towards the the end game unless there's some obvious gaps in the mid game. Like if there's if if uh, if you've either either got a hole, a leveling hole where there's terrible grind that you have to shoot through in order to to complete the leveling path. Or if that game has been around for so long that the whole leveling process has been completely stale, then I can see working on or focusing on early, earlier level content. But uh, when the game is brand new like this, and we're assuming that there's nothing wrong with the leveling path, make end game content. Because, uh, I mean, get the people who were passionate about the game and jumped in and leveled quickly and everything like that. Keep them happy and fed. That's probably going to be the key to success in a, in a game like that. That's what I think anyway. And, Leonor, are you happy as a level 50 player that there is content there that's in the form of an actual persistent content rather than what Rift did and they did events? in game which were and like even the you could go so far as to say the living story in guild wars 2 was temporary content are you happy that they're they've gone in this direction of permanent content uh, so that when yeah. bill when bill comes up to level 50 he can do this content i, I think it's a i think it's kind of strange that it was so early i mean the game's just been out for three four weeks now there's people dying for content already Yes, I, I, I realize that, and, and they are pretty smart to go ahead and put, you know, a big chunk of endgame content in there. Um, I'm happy it's permanent, not like Guild Wars 2, um, but, they're, you know, they're trying to change that up a little bit over there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that this caters to a lot of the people that um, rush through the game and, and rush through the, the endgame content and then said, well, what do we do now? I, I think that this is very cool that they're adding on endgame content. Um, I'm also wondering if they were watching the numbers and deciding if they should release endgame content or midgame content, having both on hand just to see how the numbers go and then releasing the, the proper one that they needed to. Well, it is released right at sub time. Everybody's mm -hmm. subscription is coming up who got the game. Alone. Oh, that's true. That's right. true. I mean, that's that's the conspiracy theory. I think they're just following through <laughs> with what they said. They said, and that they're going to release constant content. And that's hey, in the in the day and age of free to play, which we are in, if you are not going to be free to play, you better have a damn good content delivery system to make sure that people who are paying mm -hmm. that fifteen bucks a month are happy that they are doing so. Yeah, and I, and I'll have to say what the chat room says. Who is uh, Armiga? Who says meow? There we go. All right. Uh, on that auspicious note, let's move on to the news. So, in the shocking news of the week, uh, we it was announced, released, and 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 thrust upon the the gaming public this week that warhammer 40,000 eternal crusade wants your money like now right. so right now yeah so so yeah, right uh, now eternal crusade is has oh, uh, released their their what they're calling their their founder program which is a bunch of uh uh different packages that you can purchase uh ahead of the release of the game that give you uh, a couple of uh of uh bonuses and that kind of thing mostly for points that are going to be available in the rogue trader system which you can actually uh, uh browse around a little bit in the in the store section of the of the of the site but ultimately it's it, it's all points there's a couple little ba uh, banners and that kind of thing but it's all in-game stuff and, and that's and you know that's interesting but this is a game that's not going to be out for two years right so 
two years in advance of the release of the game, you are getting a bunch of stuff that you can buy now and use in two years. And I just, I, unless you're just the, the absolutely pinned to experience and touch everything, uh, eternal crusade, uh, immediately and experience it all and throw your 450 us dollars at it now yeah yeah that's 450 dollars for a founder's pack i think we were going a little bit crazy with the landmark one which was 199 wasn't it yeah yeah and there's at least some precedent for that like so some of the like it's like the lifetime subscriber games that we used to get back in the day uh that that was kind of the the level it was around 200 250 dollars it was kind of your premier offering i I mean almost 500 bucks now that just seems silly like let's see what we get here for for the 500 bucks we get a whole bunch of points to spend in the rogue trader like 650,000. 610, it says. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 610,000. Uh, mm-hmm. Wow. Um, Pre launch game access, early game module access. This is the whole um, Chris Roberts, uh, what's it called? Um, what's Chris Roberts' space game called again? Oh, you know, the one that kick started and now it's. Of course, everyone. I, I, knows space it. in it's... Robert Space Industry. I get the emails all the time. Yep. Oh, it's... I'm feeling stupid. Anyways, they're the game <laughs> module, right? They're going to release I... different parts to test, and you'll get access to those, uh, and a whole bunch of in-game cosmetic-y sort of things. But like, what the bleep? Star Citizen. Yeah. Jeez. Star Citizen. Thank you. Not um, cheesing you. I can't believe it took me almost a minute to start, get there. like. So in the Rogue Trader store, you can spend your points to get gear and stuff like that. But, jeez, God, 450 bucks. I just, that, that to me. But again, here's yep. the thing. Here's what I come down to when it comes to this sort of stuff. If you're interested in this game and you want to spend the money, who are we to say it's a bad thing? Oh, I know who we are. We are the po- <laughs> We're the pontificators <laughs> of the podcast that make that hangs their hat on unfounded opinions and BS. So, right, but so my yes, here's okay, here's the actual thing. <laughs> if you're gonna get, if you're gonna be putting together a pre order program like this, there's got to be some benefit that the that the the customer is going to be seeing uh, at the day. I mean, I'm not saying that you throw them into mm-hmm. like pre alpha and and uh, help with the development or anything like that. I don't necessarily hate the idea that they're trying to drum up some some revenue or some some source of cash uh, ahead of the release of the game but this is all useless crap that's not going to have any value for two years I, for I'm, I'm sorry there is even if you're a huge fan uh. of warhammer 40,000 and and you're just salivating for this game you get nothing for two years it's going to be 2016 it's for four hundred fifty dollars. I would at least, at least expect a big box of a uh, Blood Raven cardboard armor that I could wear. <laughs> well, it should be what it should be. If you, if they're, if you're, t- they're taking your money this far in advance of the game. There should be something special that you're going to get from from it. Like it should be something right. that it the early adopter reward. You should be getting a a little boost or something that someone who decides to jump into the founder pack uh in 18 months isn't gonna get well you do get limited edition banners and titles and stuff like that this stuff might not be around do you honestly believe that's not gonna be around in 18 months i think well i hope that some of the well okay you're right so i this this is i tried to talk my way out of it but no you're right. What if, is, the, what if the company, you know, has bad times and, and this gets pushed back even further? Could very yeah. well. This is like a Kickstarter. When you are doing something like this, um, this is what you're looking This is basically a Kickstarter and you don't know if, um, if, if it's going to come out. Yeah, because cause no game has ever been late in coming out or ever been canceled before it ever came out. Yeah, 
it, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I just, this is the know. most extreme. Um, uh, uh, this is the most extreme thing that I've seen in MMOs for, for any game. It's just, it's pushing the line too far. It's, it's yeah. asking for too much and without giving enough in return. And I, it, it's, it, it's, it's a bad taste in my mouth. I, I am now just, I'm a little bit squeamish about Eternal Crusade now. Yeah, this, this is, is this, kind of this rough. Is a at step least, down at least with like, with a step the, up. at least with like Guild Wars 2, you got this really cool statue and stuff, right, Chris? I did. I, I have yeah, my you know, like to... stuff like that. That's actually yeah. pretty cool. You can, Get it in your hands. You can do something with it right now. You know, um, uh, this is... Uh, yeah, I, I, I flipped when I seen this article today. I'm like, holy cow. I can't believe this. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's a weak offering from the beginning. Maybe they'll come back. Maybe they'll revise it. And that would be great. I hope they do. But, but they've got something down, now, all the way down to, um, like, five bucks, I think, is the, is the cheapest thing you can get. 40 bucks, but I'm they've got some packs that you can get too, as well. I'm looking at the, uh, the, the pre-order page, so maybe yep. I'm, missing, I'm, I'm missing the section of it there, but the, the cheapest thing is 40 bucks US on the pre-order page. Okay, yeah, you can buy $5 for 5,000 points. You don't get all the pack stuff, right? The packs bundles a whole so, bunch <laughs> of stuff together. Hang so, on then. Yeah. So for five bucks, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna donate your five bucks to forty thousand and Eternal Crusade and everything like yeah. that, and you're gonna get uh, a handful of Rogue Trader points or something, or yeah, but no, no, you can buy them now. You but you um you can't you don't get early access to the game. Only the packs get you that right. Mm. So I just so do, do so you guys you get, think that this is. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bill. I was going to say you could you could, could spend your money and you could get points for for you could get points for the Rogue Trader uh, a venue that gets you stuff that you could wear in game, but you don't actually have the game. Right. Yeah. But this is, um, you know, look at the success right now that Chris <laughs> Roberts is having with Star Citizen, and how happy people are with the modules and how willingly they throw their money every time a new ship comes up to support it and it's up to what 50 or 60 bill, billion million now <laughs> in its funding right it is astronomical in its in its amount of funding so I think that game though was i mean there's there's more being offered there not the least of which actual game features like they've actually got stretch goals there where if they hit x number or x amount of funding that they're going to develop this and they're going to add this to the game. I, I mean, I'm not seeing anything here other than just we want your money. Okay, yeah. so the and that's it. Star Citizen um, Kickstarter uh, wa came out and was successfully funded in November 2012. It's now summer 2014, and people are just starting to get content that they can actually play. That is. Close enough to two years that, that I can make some comparisons here. Mm -hmm. And are you just saying that it's the way that they're doing their funding? Instead of going through a Kickstarter, they're doing these founders packs. And it's... that's, you know, there's people who've spent thousands and thousands on Star yeah. Citizen. And don't get me wrong. I, I'm not, I, I still think that it's, it's I, I, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around uh, putting money into uh, a game that I know I'm not going to play for two years when I know I could actually wait two years and just buy the game then. So just coming from that perspective first. That said, I don't think Star Citizen is as egregious as what uh, Warhammer is doing here because Star Citizen was working on the on the basically the development platform that says, you know what, we're we're. The, the public is funding this game and we are going to build this game based on how much the public funds it. So features mm -hmm. have been added to the game, the MMO elements, the other there, there's a bunch of other uh, game features that have come out of the public funding and, and it's, and they, they actually are fairly transparent in how much money the, the public, uh, the public funding uh, uh, requests are, how much money the, the community is actually provided to say this is where we are this is what our budget is because this is what you gave us star citizen is funded by the people who have pre-ordered the game 
War, I, I'm not seeing any. There, there's no, there's nothing with Eternal Crusade that indicates that's actually the case. They, it seems to me that the Eternal Crusade is working off kind of the traditional funding model for for game publishing, where they've got money in the bank either through a publisher or an investor or something like that, and mm-hmm. they're building this game. They're going to build this game whether four people buy the 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 uh, the Warrior Pack or four million people buy the Warrior Pack before 2016 so it right. just feels slightly more disingenuous to, to to that 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 money ask yeah i i it's it's a huge amount of money it's a different enough way that i'm not as comfortable with it as i would be through a kickstarter um i think you know especially the amount of money there for that 450 pack which no one has to buy that's a choice that you buy that Mm-hmm. Um, I'm less comfortable with this than I would be supporting something on Kickstarter, even though fundamentally they're the same in that you may get nothing for your money. That possibility is there. That being mm-hmm. said, I love me some more Hammer 40K. And when this comes mm-hmm. out, I'm going to be in there booting some Space Marine ass. Because mm-hmm. that's the yeah, way I, I roll. I think that this is one of the franchises that can probably pull off selling these things two years early <laughs> well they've tried yeah. they've tried getting warhammer 40k mmos going and i think a couple have died so and i think people are starting to come around to the notion that big names in mmos don't necessarily equal success i think there's been enough uh brand name mmos that uh have uh not met expectations that uh, people aren't that keen for it i think we like it, give it another there month is and, question to it yeah give it another month and we'll be able to make a, a a reasonable judgment as to whether or not wildstar an original ip was a better success than elder scrolls online uh yeah it, it's too early to say right now i mean we need to see how things settle once sort of that first subscription bump goes by but i'm seeing at least out in in reddit and out in the twitterverse um, a fair amount less negativity towards Wildstar than I was seeing towards Elder Scrolls Online. I'm not ready to make a, a judgment call on that yet, but I mean, Elder Scrolls is a pretty established IP. Yep, it so. is, and so is um, a monster IP is Lego. Yeah, we'll see how that one does too when it comes forward, taking sort of the I'd be Marvel really Heroes interested route to know that. Mm-hmm. and sort of doing that dungeon crawler thing. All right, uh, moving on from pre development alpha 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 uh we're gonna talk about <laughs> some alpha beta stuff that's coming up uh pathfinder what? is this like oh. a sorority or something or i'm oh, sorry <laughs> lambda 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 alpha 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 um triple <laughs> a come and tell you if you need it all right Ooh. so um We've got a couple of uh, beta and alpha news here. Uh, Pathfinder is going alpha for its uh, for its supporters. It's uh, it's um, wow, that's showing the wrong page uh, for its Kickstarter supporters. So that's awesome to see. Uh, and lots of people are excited about this. I'm still not as excited about Pathfinder. Uh, I wasn't as as interested as maybe some other people were uh, when it was announced. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that are very, very keen on it, but I'm sort of ho-hum. Uh, what about you guys? Are you guys going to try and see if you can get into the alpha for Pathfinder? I, I don't think... Yeah, I'm not... I'm meh on it i i don't yeah. i'm not that's not to say that i'm disinterested or that i don't care i i, I am curious but i'm not like yeah. passionate in that i have mm-hmm. to jump in and do this i i think i was kind of thinking about this as just reading the show notes before the game and kind of planning on on what i wanted to talk about i feel about pathfinder pathfinder online kind of like i do with uh like books to movies and books to TV shows and that kind of thing. Like I actually feel like I kind of want to sit down and play the actual Pathfinder pen and paper game system first and kind of learn a little bit about the universe that way before I jump into the game. And I kind of wanted to to ask how you guys felt about that too. Like, do you think there's a there's a parallel there 
that uh, that's if you're going to play the game that's based off the other game, that maybe you play the other game first so you can see if you're actually going to be interested in this game. <laughs> or do you look at Pathfinder online and just kind of say, you know what, I, I'm aware that it is another game, but I'm just going to try to tr- look at the game as a clean slate and see if it grabs me. Uh, um, that was I, way I, too I, convoluted. <laughs> <laughs> just want to put I that think, out there? Uh, Okay. Um, I, uh, I can kind of so help you, you out a little bit here. It's the, um, uh, you've, you've played Dungeons and Dragons before. Have you played, uh, the 3.5 rules? Yes. Okay. Um, that's what the, the original books of Pathfinder are based on is the 3.5 Dungeons and Dragons rules. So you're probably familiar with, uh, uh, some of the things that are set up, you know, like the jargon and stuff that they use in those books. Um, the second thing is, just like Dungeons & Dragons, unless you have something like Forgotten Realms or Dragonlance or something like that, uh, there isn't too much, like, lore or anything like that to go by. I mean, it's... Um, uh, they're probably going to be bringing up more lore and ironing more story out in the actual MMO when that comes out. Dragonlance you, you is the bomb, I mean? by the way. <laughs> the so bomb. No, Dragonlance. I was, I was raised on Dragonlance. That, that's my, that was my geek seeds yep. being planted there. Yeah. All but, right. Uh, um, anyway, where, basically where I'm trying to go with it is, like, do, do, you, do you play the pen and paper before you jump into the MMO no. in order to maximize your experience and knowledge no. about Pathfinder? No. no. Not for this situation, nope. I don't think so. Maybe something along the lines of uh, um, Steve Jackson's Paranoia you might want to uh, jump into and, and look in some of that if uh, somebody was making an MMO of that, just to get used to that kind of universe. But this, no, this is, uh, this is straight up fantasy. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the other uh, beta alpha sort of stuff news that we want to talk about was uh, the Arc Age. Um, uh, beta launch is coming up. Uh, this is the westernization of Arcage by Tryon. Uh, this uh, Arcage is originally launched in Korea. It's going now, and they're going to launch it, I believe, with the uh, uh, the one point two content. So it's just called Patch One Point Two, Version One Point Two, and they're going to launch it here. Uh, I this is one game that I wish I had more time in my life uh, because I really 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 wish that i could play more of this because it just looks really interesting it's got a huge following in korea mm-hmm. are you Leonor? are you interested in, in arc age at all uh i haven't looked too much into it uh but a friend of mine was telling me about it today and pointed out this article and i was like holy cow this game looks absolutely amazing so i am now I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, kind of leery about joining that closed beta though because you know every time I promote a Asian game on this show it closes down. <laughs> it does, it does. Uh, so we will not be having you cover <laughs> this game because we <laughs> like it. Um, it has a, I don't know why, but this has a super strong Ashron's Call vibe for me. I don't know why, but watching, I've watched a couple of gameplay videos. I've seen a little bit of stuff. It just, I don't, it just feels a little, maybe it's the landscape is similar or I don't know. And that's a good thing. I like that strong call. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm curious mainly because, uh, or it's the game gets my attention mainly because Tryon's name is on it and I have fun memories of my, biannual games of rift and everything <laughs> like that so uh so what is tryon's involvement here though are they in the the western westernization or the the uh like is their role mainly with publisher the, mostly the regionalization and publishing of it in yeah. north america or did they do they actually have a part in the development of the game uh, in korea as no. well no no they're just westernizing this stuff uh, it's being westernized. Their their big role is publisher and and community support in uh, in the Western world. So, okay, yeah, 
Yeah, so uh, I I'm that this is one that's that's on my radar quite a bit. So you should go check it out. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes, and you can see how you can get into uh, see if you can get your way into the beta. All right, Leonor, uh, quick uh, quick message for all our Swotor players. Yes, Star Wars: The Old Republic is having a double experience week. It starts today and ends on the seventh of July. Cool. So go get your force up. Huh? <laughs> That's nicely good, done. Huh? Very nicely done. <laughs> Very nicely done. Hey, and last one that we wanted to mention too, uh, and this this is kind of a big one here, is that uh, Warlords of Draenor is uh, is coming out, and it will be uh, coming out as a uh, a beta. And so the, we've got a link as well uh, how you can get into the beta. Um, it, it link to Battle.net. Um, pretty much anyone who quit over a year ago, uh, up to a year ago, could theoretically get an invite. Uh, but they haven't really said whether or not you need an active subscription to get into the beta. I, I, I've, uh, I can, I think I can say this. I hope so. I, I've had access for a bit, and I don't have an active subscription. So it's uh, NDAs down, so you can stream, post, all that sort of stuff, all about it. And this is something different than than many other games. And I wanted to get your opinion on this, guys. Blizzard has had no problem for the last couple of expansions, and I, I don't remember anything before that, um, putting out their content uh, and letting people stream it, talk about it for six months or so before they actually launch. That's a long time to not have an NDA on a beta. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's abnormally long in the MMO industry. Bill, I mean, is this is this just Blizzard because they can do it Blizzard, or do you think it actually um, has a negative effect on uh, on on the on the game by being able to see all the beta stuff so in so much depth so early? I think it's something that World of Warcraft is relatively unique in that they could get a, like they could get away with it in other game and other games can't. Uh, and I, th- in my mind anyway, the reason is because. The the people who are still in World of Warcraft already know the game probably f- probably inside and out. You don't. I don't think uh, even though they still have gaudy subscription numbers and everything like that. I don't think you're getting a lot of new players discovering the game or anything like that. So what they are adding is stuff that people are going to already know fairly well on release. Now, combine that with the fact that uh, that there's it, there's an anticipation point here as well too, and there's a risk of of uh, attrition to their subscription base because of boredom. So the 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 advantage where I'm trying to go is the the advantage of of putting it putting out the NDA and showing the new stuff before the new stuff kind of comes out is almost like a just showing people something new and shiny in World of Warcraft right. so they don't get bored. Here's what to come. Stick around so that you get to do exactly. it. Or come back when this launches because look how cool it is. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. And I don't can't think of another game that could pull that off. Like if, uh, like I, the, the obvious example for me is if Guild Wars 2 said, hey, we've got this new feature that's coming out in six months, but check out all this beta coverage of it right now, I, I would be bored of it. In th- I would be bored of that coverage in three months, I think. And I right. love Guild Wars 2. And so. Armiga says in the chat room too, WoW is big enough to get away with any bad press it might get. Uh, he thinks newer games don't have Blizzard's money. And yeah, I mean, Blizzard can probably survive. Like a, if, if the beta stuff gets panned because it's buggy or because it's weird or something like that, A, Blizzard has the resources to fix it quickly. So I don't. I think they probably see more eyes on it equals better development. And B, I mean, if it gets attention for a problem that they can fix, then so be it. That's, uh, that's uh, them getting another another spot in the Emmable Reporter podcast or getting <laughs> onto uh getting on to the rest of the the sites out there and 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 being read about and kind of being part of the conversation too so people don't get bored and move on to whatever the new hotness is so like like Wildstar yeah i mean i've jumped in and i have made my holy cow um 
and that's a torn paladin for those of you who don't of course. know. And uh, I'm, I'm going to pop, pop around in there. Uh, I, I like the new character models. They look great, like super fantastic, especially the Torrens, which is why I made one. But all of the, the, the models have had an upgrade. Um, I'm interested in what they're going to do with their housing. Um, what are they calling it again? Not Warplots is, uh, is Wildstar stuff, but uh, Keeps, not Keeps. Uh, starts with a D. Anyways. Can't remember exactly what they're calling it, uh, but it, that looks interesting. Um, the their approach to content will always—I mean, it's always fantastic content that they put together. Um, I—I I, I, just—I don't know if it's going to be enough to keep me around for a long time. Uh, and uh, you know, if I can scrounge together sixty bucks, maybe I'll, I'll get to level ninety. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's probably <laughs> the only way I'd do it because they offer that. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we do have a link on, on how to, how to get an invite, uh, from over at cinema blend. So that's, that's pretty cool. I don't know, Bill, you, you like, uh, garrisons. Thank you. Armiga reminded me garrisons is what they're calling. It's their housing. You can have, you know, build it up and it's, it's more than just a house. It's an actual gameplay mechanic. So, you know, you build it up and you can do your farming and you can have little guys there to help you out. And yeah. So. Uh, a bigger they, they, i think they're doing housing right for the wow universe not just having you know the the standard you know lotro's housing is pretty standard of you know here's a house decorate it we built yeah, the house yeah. we got everything set up but hey here's a couple of spots where you can put something you can't put anything anywhere but there's specific hooks that you can put stuff on mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> And this is getting towards the trend, I think, of, uh, I mean, we're starting to see their, the sandbox development uh, starting to happen. And there seems to be a little bit of a resurgence in that concept. So right. uh, I think games are probably, you're, you're probably going to see a pattern of games putting more elements like that, where people can affect the world permanently in a way that's that's independent of the storyline and everything yeah. like that. So, I mean, I'm not saying that Garrison's turns World of Warcraft into a sandbox or anything like that, but it's a little bit like that. Yeah. No, I think it, it adds some individuality to the game. Which is mm -hmm. unfortunately becoming very, very mm, not on rails. On rails is the wrong word, but there's the right spec, uh, and then there's everything else, mm -hmm. right? And that's that. Uh, World of Warcraft is is one of the games that sort of pioneered that. If you're not doing this spec, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all right. Um, that's pretty much all the news. Unless you guys have any more con comments that you want to make on that. And um, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> nope. Uh, there was a uh, a friend of mine named Old Gamer sent me a message before he went to bed. He said that a game called Bounty Hounds Online, which is a um, he says it's a sci-fi shooter game, shooter MMO, is uh, uh, um, being released or in beta or something like that. And a uh, MMORPG.com is giving away beta keys. And there's like 3,000 some keys or something like that. So if you want to join up and do something different, especially in a sci-fi game, you should probably give that a shot. That's very cool. A uh, couple things we want to mention before we get to our sponsors. First of all, we have started a Patreon campaign. Uh, you can check it out at patreon.com slash MMO reporter. And we're trying to do things a little bit differently here. Um, you know, we've got a couple goals with this, but my, my biggest thing is I want to see if we can, instead of uh, keep pushing for some sponsors and doing all our PAX videos and, and you know, having to wear our GoDaddy spots, uh, 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 not sponsored, our GoDaddy themed underwear to PAX. Um, Songs. Exactly. We want to... Uh, you know, do things a little bit differently and trying to work through Patreon to let you support us in the place of those sponsors so that we can do all this stuff without having all those ads in the place of, of the show in the middle of the show. And you can see that a few months ago with this show, we changed things up a little bit and, and sort of with this goal in mind, sort of move the, the couple of coupon codes to the end of the show and, um, and and sort of minimize that but uh, we're hoping through the patreon campaign that you can become our patrons and you can help support the mmo reporter network what we want to do is we want to be able to do all the coverage of all the conventions that you love 
pay for, for gear to make sure that we can do things at an uh, amazing quality and of course pay all of our staff. So if you like what we do, if you want to check out the Patreon campaign, check out patreon.com slash MMO reporter. I'll have a link in the show notes. Uh, we've got a few different pledge levels that you can do and there's some rewards for the pledges, you know, things like we'll follow you on on uh, on Twitter if you pledge a dollar. Uh, if you pledge uh, five dollars, we'll send you a personalized tweet saying thank you as well as following you and um for ten dollars we'll mention you on the show for 25 we will give you a random piece of swag from the mmo reporter uh swag closet while supplies last we last we fill that up every uh, packs or convention that we go to um fifty dollars you get a guest host spot and for a hundred dollars you will get to take part in a monthly Skype or Google Hangout. We'll figure that out once we get this uh, this all set up and we get some pledges with three MMO Reporter Network hosts, and that'll rotate. Uh, we'll have different people available each month, but every month that you you pledge that top pledge, you'll get to take part in that, and we'll talk about whatever you want. Just to, just chat, hang out, do stuff. So that is it. Uh, our our couple of goals here. We want to if we get five hundred dollars a month, we're going to take off every ad that you see anywhere in the MMO Reporter Network, except for our, our, our coupon codes for things that are going to give you deals, but we'll we'll make sure those aren't prominent in the shows. And then, of course, uh, if we hit $1,000, then we will uh, be able to guarantee our attendance at PAX. So that's the big one. Mm -hmm. So if you like what we do, patreon.com slash MMO Reporter. We already have a couple of supporters, and we just kind of soft launched this today, so go check it out. All right, uh, we will mention our Doghouse code because Doghouse is awesome. They're pretty fantastic. MMO Reporter at DoghouseSystems.com. You put that code in, MMO Reporter at DoghouseSystems.com. You'll get double your RAM when you order your system. And that's where you want to go to order your stuff. They're fantastic. Harry says nothing but amazing. I have not heard a single negative thing about Doghouse Systems from anyone who's bought them. So that's pretty fantastic. All right, Bill, people want to contact us. What are some of the different ways that they can do that? Well, they can head on over to MMOReporter.com, which is the central magical hub for all of the MMO <laughs> Reporter podcast network shows and, and communication methods and everything like that. So if you're tuning me out right now and you come back and decide, oh, I got to contact MMO Reporter, just let's go to MMOReporter.com. You'll find everything there. Uh, you could also send us an email to MMO.Reporter at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash MMO Reporter. You can tweet at any of us, either at MMO underscore Reporter, at Leonor, at MMO Bill, or at Harry Hall, the invisible host. Uh, and finally, or almost finally, send us a voicemail at 616-666-6778 if you're using the, the old uh, talky tools on your, on your phone. Uh, or you can go to the website <laughs> and click on the widget and, and leave us a voicemail there. Check out all our stuff over at YouTube to see uh, the stream uh, YouTube versions of the uh, podcast as well as our content from previous uh, gaming shows, streamed game sessions and that kind of thing. And finally, we're going to add this to the list. Head on over to patreon.com slash MMO reporter if you would like to lend your support to our cause. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you, Lainor. It's been a fantastic show. I really enjoyed it. This was fun. Lots of good discussions. This was a lot of fun, and I I, uh, I almost put my pants on. It's kind of cold. Okay, and Bill, thanks. This, we got to go quick, apparently. Leonor's having bladder mm -hmm. issues. I... <laughs> yeah, that, this sounds like an emergency. I fund tonight, so that was good. Awesome. Uh, and thanks to everyone for hanging out in the chat room. We had a couple people chatting with us. It's, as always, it's a lot of fun. Uh, thanks to everyone who downloads the podcast week after week. That is an amazing amount of fun or watches it on YouTube. We've had a lot of people watching on YouTube lately. So thanks a lot for that. We hope that you like it week after week. We hope that you watch it, download it, whatever. But most importantly, we hope to see you in game. Don't, 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 don't forget about your goals you need to cherish. Each and every little character you've got, no.